Hey, beautiful humans. You all know how important that I believe purpose and values are when it comes to starting and growing a business, especially if you've been around here for any length of time whatsoever, you've heard me talk about it. Well, today, my special guest is, a, is passionate about building a purpose-driven business that aligns with your values as I am. And we're going to talk about aligning your goals for 2023 based on your values and your purpose. Whether you've started mapping your 2023 goals or not, you are going to be ready to set yourself up for the best year yet after you listen to this conversation. And after you learn from Anna, you can hop over to the show notes for the link to listen to episode 135, in which Stacey Tushel shared how to set goals that are achievable without burnout. I interviewed her back in 2021, I think maybe in August of 2021. Um, so it was a little early uh, as far as into the year goal planning goes, but it was a great episode to break down your goals, which I'm sure we'll talk about some of that today, but it's always good to hear things more than once. You can go over and listen to episode 135 as well. And don't forget that all of the links that are mentioned during the interview will be available in the show notes as well. And that includes the link to my free ebook on how to build a solid foundation for long-term success of your business. All right, without further ado, Anna McRae, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. I I actually just finished my map mapping out my goals and business plan for 2023. I have a little wiggle room, things I still need to do. So who knows? Maybe I'll apply some of what we talk about today to my own business for 2023. But um, before we dive into talking about goal setting and all of that juicy stuff, will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you got to where you are today? Sure. So what I do today is I'm a business coach for ambitious entrepreneurs who want to create not just financial success, but fulfilling success. And so prior to jumping into coaching, I had spent a lot of time in business consulting, climbing the corporate ladder and working with a lot of entrepreneurs across all different industries and all various sizes of business and saw that a lot of them were actually unhappy. And it boggled my mind, right? For me, especially when I was still in a corporate job, this dream of entrepreneurship was, you know, I had made it out to be the solution to everything. You become your own boss. You have control over your time. You get to choose what you do, how you do it. And yet I encountered so many entrepreneurs that just weren't fulfilled regardless of the level of success that they had created. And so I made it my personal mission to help people create not just that financial piece that they have been told will solve all of their problems for them, but really a level of fulfillment in their business and in their life so that, you know, when you wake up in the mornings, you're actually excited about what you have ahead of you and you lay down at night feeling really great about how you spent your day and what you've achieved. Mm, I love that so much. And what, what is that old adage? Money isn't everything. Mm -hmm. And it really is true. And I think because of bro marketing and everything we see online and uh, listeners, you know, I've talked about it um, over the past couple of months, how I went off of social media. And that's one of the reasons I did, because there's so much unnecessary pressure to then compare yourself to other people that are making six figures, seven figures, eight figures. And everything is about getting, you know, every coach out there is, you know, seven figures, eight figures, six figures, whatever. And it's like, come on, there's so much more to life than the dollar sign. Now, I'm not saying having money isn't nice. <laughs> it certainly is great to be able to, you know, live the life you want to live and travel and do all the things and be able to donate to your favorite organizations and whatnot. But I, I think there's so much more to life than just money and having that, the, the fulfillment is key. Like I don't wake up in the mornings and think, oh, gosh, I've got a coaching client today. I'm like, oh, wait, oh, great. This is going to be an awesome call today. I can't wait to serve this person. You know, it's just when you're, you want to be doing something that lights you up. And if you're not go back and I know Anna, that you agree with this 100%, but go back and dive into your passions and your values and discover like, where did you get off track? Because sometimes we do get off track. We lose sight of our passions. We lose sight of our values and what we really, truly stand for. And, it, and we have to go back to the root of who we are. So 
Okay. I'm not going to keep preaching about that because I want to dive into goals, but I just wanted to add that how important I think that is. And I love that that's one of the emphasis um, in your business, like it is in mine. So Anna, let's talk about goal setting. And one of the things when, you know, beforehand we were, we were kind of, well, actually you emailed me a very great list of, of different things we could talk about. And this is the one we landed on, which is so great. But, um, you, you mentioned where people often go wrong in goal setting. And I would love for you to tell us a little bit about that. Um, whether people have started yet or not for 2023, it's let's, Let's talk about like where people go wrong so that the listeners don't go down the wrong path to go down the right path straight, straight out of the gate when setting their 2023 plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such an important topic to dive into, because I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially, you know, if you're type A or driven or you've just been goal setting for a while or, you know, you're caught in that trap, like you mentioned, of comparing where you are at financially to other people, et cetera, it can be really easy to want to, you know, participate in some goal setting process so that you can get further ahead, but actually end up doing more harm than good if you fall into some of these mistakes, which are so common across, you know, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, there's so much information out there about goal setting and the abundance of it mostly is just confusing, if not downright conflicting with each other. And so what I've noticed, there are some things that we tend to do that I've done in the past as I was setting my goals that now I can look back on and laugh and that I see some of my clients start to go down that path that I really help coach them out of that prevent us from setting goals in a way that actually works for us. And so number one, and I think this one we all might have experience with is just setting too many goals. And I think that you know, especially if you're ambitious and you just want to achieve all the things, you're going to want to improve every area of your life. And I know part of this, there is an exercise that is pretty common in the industry around like your wheel of life, right? And looking Mm -hmm. at every area of your life and then deciding what 10 out of 10 looks like and setting a goal for it. And the problem with that is that when you assume that every area of your life needs improvement, not to mention then the business side of things too, everything is a priority. And when everything is a priority, nothing is a priority. We're humans. There's only so many hours in a day. You can't possibly improve every single area of your life at the same time. And so I think that's one of the biggest mistakes is trying to do it all instead of really focusing on what's truly most important to you and improving in those areas. Mm Mm-hmm. I love that. And, you know, it's funny because as, since I just have been through this process with my business, it's like, you know, I've created some really great habits. And so I have those listed as my goals for 2023 to continue. Mm -hmm. I don't feel I need to improve on those, but I don't want them to slip away from me. So they're in my like maintain column. Right. And that's more of the, on the personal side. And then if you break out your, your other goals, you can, you can categorize your goals, right? Like you have your, you know, things you want to do for your business, things you want to do in your business and how you want to increase your visibility, you know, the things you want to focus on, but you can kind of combine those into three buckets so that you're not so spread apart. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So that was number one. Yeah. Number two. And you know, this is my, I have a a personal trigger around smart goals, right? And I think there are some, some great things in this, in the smart goals framework, but the two that I find actually do more harm than good is setting this concept of realistic goals and this concept of time bound goals. And so that's where I find a lot of people actually set themselves up to fail by following that kind of common advice. And I'll explain why, because most people don't think this way. But when you try to set goals that are realistic, quote unquote, you know, that realism is defined by somebody that isn't you, right? And so you're trying to appease the masses and what's possible for you isn't necessarily what's possible for other people, right? We're all different. And yet, 
ultimately whether or not it's realistic is defined by when you bring it up and set, someone says, are you sure that you're actually going to be able to write the book, launch the business, whatever, put on that retreat? And so then automatically what we do is we shrink and we start to play small. And the problem with that is if you're not wildly excited about your goals, you're just not going to sustain the energy and effort required to you know, put in the work to get that goal achieved. And so that is one of the, the second mistake that people really fall for is trying to set these goals that are realistic by other people's standards instead of really digging deep into what do they believe is possible for them and forgetting what anybody else thinks. Mm, I love that. You know, it's funny that you say that because I pretty much just have my head down when I'm doing this process and setting my goals. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's what I know for me. So I, I'm glad you said that because it I can see how other people would get really um, distracted and then, you know, saying it like I was telling my husband about some, I was like, okay, the way I laid this out, it could mean this for next year. And he's like, that would be amazing. And he's like, and so what are you going to do to make that happen? And then I tell, you know, told him and it was like, wow, you know, just talking this out, this is realistic. This could mm -hmm. really all come to fruition based on this plan. But then there are always those caveats, I think that you have to um, consider as well, but that doesn't mean that it's not realistic. It's, mm -hmm. it's a caveat because things come up, right? Or your priorities could shift mid-year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think the more in tune you are with what you truly want, right? Which is probably why the goal settings process is so smooth for you based on what you do and what you stand for is you're just really, really good at knowing what you actually want and then, you know, making a plan around making that happen. But what I see a lot of the time is, you know, entrepreneurs that are trying to set goals just because somebody else has set it, right? And so maybe making a million dollars is realistic for you this year, or maybe it's not based on what, you know, where you're at, but that can't be defined by an arbitrary metric. Like somebody else can't tell you whether or not it's realistic. Only really you can know whether you're going to be able to sustain the energy and effort to get there. Right. And what are you yeah. willing to put on the line to be able yeah. to achieve that? Yeah. 100%. And I think, um, it's, it's not that I'm so good at this by any means. Um, I mean, I would not say that at all, but I do know what my limitations are. And I also know, I know how much I want to work and how much I don't want to work. And I also know, um, what I don't like to do and what I'm not willing to put on for my goals, but maybe that's what I'm hiring extra team members for, or I'm going to delegate to a team member. And I think that's an important thing to think about too, because if it's not, I love that you said that, because if you're not completely aligned with it, it's not going to fly. You're not going to reach that goal. And the, I think the more we do that to ourselves, and, and the more we set ourselves up for, I guess, burnout for, you know, decreasing our overall opportunities for success. Mm -hmm. Well, and you fall into this pattern of, you know, eventually wondering what's the point, right? What's the point yeah. of setting goals if I'm not going to reach them? I'm not going to make point? it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What's the point of, you know, shooting for the stars if then I'm just going to beat myself up over it, you know? Yeah. And so it, the goal setting process, it has to feel really good for you and not just something that you're trying to check the box on because yeah. everybody sets goals this time of year, right? It You have to find something that works for you. Right, right. And it doesn't hurt that if you set your goal and it's a realistic goal and you exceed it, who's going to complain about that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, okay. So what's number three? So number three is really attaching that goal to an arbitrary timeline, right? So this concept of time bound goals, while I fully agree that, you know, you have to map out the path to your goals or at least the starting point so that you can start to work towards it. And I'm a huge fan of time blocking and really understanding how you're going to dedicate that time towards your goal. What I see happen a lot of the time is, you know, entrepreneurs will say, I want to hit six figures by whatever, December 31st, 2023. 
And as they get closer and closer to December, if they haven't hit that goal yet, the motivation starts to go up maybe from a place of urgency, right? Or down because you see that timeline creeping up and you haven't hit your goal. And so what I found over and over again is that the universe doesn't care what deadline you set on your goal, right? Like things are going to take longer or less time than you expect them to because you really can't guess how long something is going to take you. But if that goal is truly important to you, if you really want to achieve it, it doesn't matter if it happens on December 31st or January 31st in six months or in 12 months or in two years even, right? It in the grand scheme of your life, of your business, like that's all just a blimp. But when we attach, when we become really attached to this deadline on our goal and we don't hit it, we either pivot strategies because we've decided this isn't working. So I'm going to try something new or we give up completely. And usually, you know, that, the path to your success, it isn't linear, right? You've got that little plateau where you're putting in the effort and then it takes off. Well, you don't know where that deadline that you made up arbitrarily when you were setting your goals is on the actual timeline. And so often, you know, I coach my clients through that process of not meeting their own expectations and continuing to work towards what's most important for them. And it's amazing how quickly they see the result that they wanted. But what we often do is we give up at that point. And so we never get to the place where it takes off, even though that goal is super important to us. Absolutely. And there's so many contributing factors. And for anyone who's a coach, you may sign five clients in January, but then you may have three dry months. So it's really hard to say when that financial goal is going to be met or how, because you could increase your pricing. And if mid-year you decide to increase your pricing, all of those numbers that you had set forth for the year are now shifting, right? Now you have opportunity for more money or you have the opportunity to have more time freedom because you're going to take less clients because you're charging more. So there's a lot of factors to consider than just saying, okay, by this date, I have to have this much money. I know entrepreneurs who have had a very, very quiet year. And then in fourth quarter made, you know, $300,000 and maybe they launched a program or maybe they, you know, just, implemented something new in their business, or maybe they had a major mindset transition and their entire business shifted. But it you can't set forth expectations, number one, if they're not aligned with your values. Number two, if, if you are in a position that there are a lot of external factors that contribute to what your the outcome of your goals are going to be, you have to give yourself that grace to not beat yourself up over not meeting all of your numbers in first quarter or second quarter, you know, having a goal of, Oh, I'm going to make six figures by or seven figures by, by June. And I'm going to have the rest of the year off. Mm -mm. It's not Mm going to happen that way. (laughs) Unless somehow you're just like super, super lucky. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I think the key there is to have the goal that's important to you and work toward it until you hit it, because if it's important, it real, the timeline doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Okay. So how do we, and I think we've kind of alluded to this a little bit, but what is the best way to get it right? Mm, I love that question. I think hands down the best way that you can get goal setting, right? The only way to really not get it wrong at all is to set it in alignment with your values, right? Your values are the things that are important to you in the way that you live and work. If you're setting goals directly from your values, you just cannot get it wrong, right? You completely eliminate this comparisonitis where you're just trying to catch up with whoever else is setting whatever goal, right? And you're not doing it just to check a box, right? Oh, December 31st, coming up, better set some goals just to say that I did so, right? You're really taking that intentional time to reflect on what is most important to me in my life, in my business, and how do I move those things forward? Mm, I love that so, so, so much. Okay, so let's talk about values for a second. How do you, for those listeners who maybe haven't done the work to define their values, What do you suggest? Is there an exercise you suggest they do? Is there a resource you suggest they take 
into consideration. I know for me, it's, you know, make looking at a list of values. And I personally love how James Clear kind of narrowed down that list of values that, and he shares it, I think on his website, you can look at it, but um, I love how he narrows it down to like 50. And then for me, it's breaking that list of 50 down to, okay, what are the 10 to 15 that resonate with me? And then breaking that down to maybe seven, because there's going to be overlap. Some of those words maybe grab your attention first and then, but they're so similar. Sorry, a package was being delivered and my dogs were going to go crazy. Oh, um, but but some of those words are so similar that then you can narrow it down even further. And so I like to get it down to, you know, from maybe 10 to 15 to 7 to 10 and then down to 3 to 5. And then those become those values that you're not willing to waver on in your business or your life for that matter. And OK, but that's my way of thinking about it. So I want to know your way of thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely. I I highly agree with you there. And I think the message that I really want to share is that, you know, defining your values isn't rocket science. It's not that hard. The problem is that we don't take the time to do it, right? And so listeners are going to listen to this episode and they're going to say, yeah, I haven't defined my values. I should really go do that. And then they're going to move on with their life right? Most of us just keep going and we keep consuming content without implementing it. But I highly recommend that you actually block out one to two hours of just creative thinking time and you can sit down with a list, right? That can be really helpful. Or you can even just think about like, if I could only focus on three to five things in my life, right? If I got to my deathbed only having done or been three to five things, what would those things be for me? And I think those questions are just so powerful. And that space of, you know, taking the time to really reflect on a deeper level, not trying to do that, you know, in between calls or anything, but carving out that space. I think it's the most important thing you could do because when you know your values, you know exactly what you're living into every single day. And you can live a life that's authentically yours and not based on someone else's expectations. But I'll add to what you're saying with the list, right? Because that's exactly how I defined mine. I love that we share this common uh, philosophy of narrowing it down to three to five, right? And I think that's the hardest part is not mm -hmm. trying to pick all of them. Because when you look at that list of 50 values, they all sound great, right? <laughs> I would love to have all of those things and be really great at all of those things. But you really have to get honest with yourself and not try to set your values from a place of pleasing people, but really get clear on if I could only pick three to five, what would they be? And then the harder part is prioritizing within that, right? So what order do those fall in for me? So personally, my three to five are family and more specifically, um, building happy memories, adventuring with my family. And then health and joy, right? Being able to live a vibrantly healthy life that's filled with things that I love and wealth and impact, being able to make the world a better place and provide for my family. But within those three, I really have to get honest with myself about which one is first, second, and third. Because then when you get a conflict arises in between your values through in business and life, right? You can take on this big project, but it's going to take time away from your family. You can really use your values to make decisions about what the right next step is. And so when you're defining your values, don't just define them, but rank them so that you can really get honest with yourself about what comes first, what comes second. And then, like I kind of mentioned in my example, personalize them, right? The value of health, that could mean a thousand different things. The value of family also means nothing to anyone until you get so specific that when you say that out loud or you read your value, you know exactly what it looks like to live into it. 
Mm -hmm. I love that. Now, how can everyone, after they've done this exercise to discover their values, how can they use those to set their goals effectively for 2023 or in years to come? Yeah. So then it's pretty simple. You look at your value and you ask yourself, what is it that I really want to achieve in this area this year? Like what's most important to me? Let's say it's family. What's most important to me to do with my family this year? What is it that I really, a way that I love to ask that question to myself is if I was standing here 12 months from now, right? So it's whatever date, 2023. And I looked back and it was the best 12 months of my life. What would that look like with regards to this value, this value, and this value? And those become your goals at a high level. And then we can talk about what it looks like to break them down and set them up for success. But essentially, rather than picking goals and then trying to decide your why behind those goals, you look at your values and then the why is built in when you set your goals directly from those values. I love this so much. And you guys, I'm going to put a link in the show notes to a recent episode. I interviewed Meryl Silverstein, Meryl Silverstein, and um, she's all about, she helps people live and leave their legacy. And this ties right in because if you are living your values, you are going to leave a significant legacy. But I think as you're planning your goals and you're aligning your goals to your values, you have a, a new way or a new, an opportunity to look at how you're living and the legacy you are going to leave when you do that. And I love your example of, you know, if this were going to be my year, what do I want that to look at? Like for me, I have six trips map, mapped in and I already know what a few of those trips are. The others are going to be, mm, we'll see, but that time with my family to adventure and see the world and, and just explore it to me, that is priceless. And I will work extra hours to achieve that if I have to. But, you know, it's it's really looking back at time and how I've impacted not only myself and my business, but my life, my family's lives and the lives of my clients. So, okay, we, we're so aligned. It's really kind of funny. Um, even our values are very, very similar. So, all right, Anna, we've got to close out the episode, but do you have any last minute advice for the listeners? And will you please let them know how they can connect with you and learn more from you? Yeah, so I think just the advice I'd want people to walk away with from this is to take that time to do this work, right? It's not urgent, but it is so important. And if you don't make time for it intentionally, it's just going to keep falling to the bottom of the list. But if you're an entrepreneur and you have ambitious goals and you want to get to your next level, whatever that looks like, you really want to make sure that that next level is aligned with what you truly want. Because I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs that you know, have run eight figure businesses for 20 plus years and ended up miserable because that whole time it wasn't aligned with their values. And it's really easy to make decisions, especially in this day and age when we're bombarded with, you know, social media and other people's expectations to make decisions that aren't yours. And you want to make sure that every day in your business, in your life, you're living in alignment with who you truly are. That's the only way that you're going to experience fulfillment. And so for anyone that's interested in having a deeper conversation around what that looks like to really define your values and use them to grow your business and to live a life that fulfills you, I would love to offer your listeners a free coaching session around that. Um, they're welcome to reach out to me on LinkedIn at Anna McRae or on my website, annamccrae.ca. Awesome. Anna, thanks so much for being here. Of course, I loved this conversation. And listeners, do take Anna's advice and do this exercise and really dive into what your values are and tie that into everything you do within your business because you are going to feel more fulfilled. You're going to be more confident in the decisions you make moving forward. And just overall, you're going to be lighter in your step because you're going to have more joy and, and hope around both your life and your business. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And if you enjoyed this episode and learned something, will you please share it with a friend or someone who you think might be able to use this great advice? And also please 
don't forget to subscribe to the show so that when new episodes are dropped, you don't miss a beat and you have them right away to listen to and learn from. And also, if you would be so, so kind to leave a rating and review, my heart would be so full. So thank you, everyone, and I'll see you next week.